So here I am with Laurel Lamarier. Laurel, can you tell us a bit about your background? Well, I'm assuming you want education background. So I was a mathematician, math major at Tulane University. Started as a chemistry major, but didn't like chemistry. Nothing was perfect enough. It, experiments didn't work and everything. So I went in math. I was good at that. So um, I worked at the Naval Electronics Laboratory at, in their... Um, in one division as a mathematician because the man hired me to maintain their budget. He hated budgets and said, you're my budget girl. But he said, I'll let you program some business applications too. So I did computer programming and managed the budget for a year or better. And then they transferred me to uh, the systems division where I programmed systems programs. And then they assigned me a shipboard computer to design and maintain. And I had employees under me to do that, and uh, that's what I did. And then we moved up here, and I didn't work again. I became a later stay-at-home mom after we had our kids here, and that was my background. And, and when did you move to the ranch? 1976. Wow. So you've been through a lot then, and yeah. I imagine I can't really ask you everything that's happened because it would be too much. Yeah. You, you, you don't have enough film. <laughs> When did you become involved with association affairs? Probably 1977, I had a horse at home and I heard about this trail committee under Sue Colburn, so I worked with her. Uh, she was a board member, a student director at the time, in charge of the trail committee. So I worked with her for three years. And then um, the next board that came in, um, the I, I don't want to get into all the details here, but uh, they discontinued the trail committee for three years until I read the covenant and told some people that it said in the covenant, it says there will be a park and recreation board that will include like trails. And we went with our covenants in hand saying there will, and the guy goes, oh, I'm so sorry. But during those three years, I turned in maintenance requests from all over the ranch uh, to maintain the trails. We did not get trail acquisition at that time because there was no committee to seek easements, but at least we kept maintained and running. So uh, trails, so you start off in the trails committee. What was your other involvement in the association? Well, for a while I took time off because I had two little kids and I was, uh, you know, the carpooling mom, you know, busy and uh, after school activities. So I didn't do as much when they were young. Uh, but later, I was elected to the San Diego Planning Group. I'm still a member of that today. And so I've been doing uh, cases for the county having to do with uh, general plan amendments like GP 2020. And that's where, by the way, they wanted to put five uh, roads through the ranch, two lane roads, uh, Camino del Norte, Camino Real La Noria, uh, La Via de la Valle, all the way through to Del Dios to become four, four lanes, and um, Old La Granada, all the way out to La Bajada, and Linea del Cielo, if you can imagine that. Well, we stopped that, but um, it, we still have the commuter traffic. I did get involved when um, they were deleting Highway 680 and 728. Um, we couldn't stop that from happening. Pam Slater uh, was mayor of Encinitas at the time, and she said that she had to delete it from their map. It'd been on our circulation element for over 20 years at that time. But she said that that uh, 680 could never work because Lucadia Boulevard, now if you've been on it lately, it's three lanes divided. But she was saying that would never connect to Rancho Santa Fe Road. Uh, but like I said, have you seen it lately? It's three lanes divided. We definitely could have had our north-south um, bypass road there and now we meanwhile we have tons of commuter traffic coming through here which is one of my main issues here yeah that's interesting that you bring that up because you know the other day i had the misfortune of having to go up uh, uh, from del dios down via santa fe and the rush hour traffic was just insane on that right. what can we do as a community to impact that at all are there do we have any options well, I know two of our supervisors. I help support them, 
And um, I think we need to advocate for Rancho Santa Fe down at the county level with the Department of Public Works and with our planning department, but uh, specifically at the Board of Supervisors level because uh, when they took those two roads off our circulation element, they really hurt Rancho. And now what's happening is all the commuter bypass traffic is taking our little sleepy windy roads that were meant to they were driven by Model A Fords, right? They're meant for us to slow down and relax when we got here, if you've read any of your covenant history. And uh, so now we've got cars, and they're angry because they're having to go through our little roads. Uh, I looked at a house recently that I decided I wouldn't buy because you'd take your life in your hands coming out of its driveway. So we need to do something to protect these homeowners. Uh, from this commuter traffic, and uh, we have to calm the traffic. So calming traffic, uh, the thing I'm, I'm wondering about is the traffic isn't going to go away unless there's bypasses. Right. Are, are there any chances of having bypasses? You know, I doubt it. Uh, you know, if we could take a road and cross the Escondido Creek, instead of where we cross at La Bajada, we could we could technically build another bridge that goes over to Manchester, but, you know, they still would have to be on El Camino Real and um, because everything else is built uh, either side of that. And uh, Escondido Creek Conservancy uh, would prohibit us from bridging it. Although I was here when we bridged it twice. We bridged it at La Bajada and Camino del Norte, you know, so it, it could be done, but I, I don't know that we would get that done. But the other thing, you know, when I took my driver's tests originally, and, you know, learning to drive and then later coming here to California, the question was, if it's unposted, what is your speed limit? Do you remember what that was? I, I want to say when I took it, it was uh, 30. 35. Do you know what it is now? No. 55. Oh no. So that means people are whipping through Rancho Santa Fe at 55 or more. I have a couple of acquaintances that have Porsches and Ferraris that have gone zipping past me at 80 while I'm on my horse. Um, but, you know, we, I hate saying we could put speed limits in because part of the problem is enforcement. You know, we don't have our patrol cannot write tickets, issue tickets. So we could post it, but unless we have our sheriffs sitting there. Um, and no one wants to go slower either, but uh, we've got a more danger than we ever used to. So I don't know. But there, there are some ideas. San Diego Planning Group. Any other committees of the association or anything you've been involved with? Community Services District, because I'm publicly elected to that, and that is technically our sewer district. But I ran for that because I wanted to bring reclaimed water to the golf course. Do you know that most of our sewage? goes, oh, all of our sewage, goes up to the Joint Powers Authority in Carlsbad, where they turn it into reclaimed water and sell it to Solana Beach, Encinitas, and Del Mar now, but we don't get any of it. And we, we've been, I'm privy to discussions on how to do that, and uh, they're giving us some hurdles that uh, they could be overcome, I think, but, um, you know, our cost is so high for the um, water for the association we're putting potable water on the golf course so yeah i was going to say the golf course uh has a challenge coming up i mean you know at some point in time the city water is going to get too expensive it is today well and i went to the um rate hike meeting last fall and spoke out against it here we are we've all you know to some degree, cut back on our water use. You know, a lot of people have done some xeriscaping. I did a bunch. And uh, let I've stopped watering an upper pasture and a side yard that we don't care about. And uh, But the water rates went up. So I used less, but the water rate went up. They also raised the fee just to have a meter. The standard meter on the street is now $85 a, uh, a month, uh, well, for two months. And my latest two bills were $113. That means 85 was just to have the meter sitting there. And then the rest of it was just a little bit of water that I used. And we pay more, a higher rate, than Solana Beach does. And yet they get to buy potable water, I mean, um, reclaimed water, 
for their uh, infrastructure. And uh, I don't know. There, I, something's got to happen. Yeah, I, I kind of short-circuited the whole thing by installing my uh, water well. I, I installed a water well a year ago. Oh. And, it, you know, obviously for landscaping. It's yeah. it's fairly salty, but it works fine for landscaping. Yeah, I put if you in, do I the put, right kind of grass. Yes. It, is this Bermuda? Is this dwarf dwarf Bermuda? It, actually, this is uh, uh, seashore paspalum. It's mm. very salt tolerant. Oh, interesting. See, I would love to put in a well. How, uh, how far down did you have to go? <laughs> well, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I I don't know if I had to go down, but we went down 1,200 feet. Oh, my gosh. Okay. How salty is it? Do you know what, um, what it's uh, It's about 3,000 parts per million. Okay. Which for, it's, it depends where That's you are on the ranch. Salty. Yeah. Yeah, well, it depends where you are on the ranch. If you go further north, uh, it gets saltier. Oh. If you go further south, it gets less salty. So what, what changes have you seen in Rancho Santa Fe and the association over the years? Oh, boy, what a loaded question, Phil. Um, well, of course, we've had a lot of development. There are lots that are uh, what we call building sites that are now uh, developed that never had houses on it before. So we have more density than we did um, because of our water things we used to be more tucked in from each other I, I mean there are some properties that couldn't be because they're more towards village and don't have the land to you know screen from each other but um used to be that you couldn't look out and see the high road f uh, in the village from you know certain other roads now you can see people driving because a lot of our trees have gone away our skyline trees and the just screening the groves have a lot of them been let to die, and that's again water rates. They're not replacing them, and that's a crime. Uh, they changed the ag rate. They got rid of the ag rate for water. That's water district. So every every amount of water you buy is the same rate, no matter if it's for orange groves or nut trees or whatever. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I have I have a barn in Livenhain. We still have ag rates there, but that's a different water that's district. That's a different water district, right? That's uh, a Livenhain water district. So yeah, the Santa Fe irrigation district has changed a bunch there. Wow. So overall, would you say that <clears throat> Rancho Santa Fe has been improving over the last twenty years or so? Have things gotten better? Have, what things have gotten better? Well, I don't know that it's. It's not getting worse, I will say that. It's not getting worse, and that is because of the art jury, which I will call it that, because that's the way it's still written in the covenant, by the way. Um, and the other one uh, gets me tongue-tied. So um, the art jury can assure that we all have a certain degree of quality around here, and um, so I think that part has kept us pretty much, you know, where we can assure, be assured that the new house coming in will look nice. And so that part is good. Um, I know we're having a lot of turnover in our staff, and that's, that's hard for us because the people with historic memory, uh, historical memory of what we used to do and how it used to be um, are gone. And so they come in and they have, it's too hard to learn, you know, on the job. I'm sorry, why are you running for the board? Well, I, you know, I moved here to have horses and on my land, to have land and elbow room. We have dogs, too. And I wanted to be able to, um, you know, ride on these trails. And then it turns out the school was excellent. So that was one reason we moved here. And why am I running now is I want to preserve this, this community character that is unique to Rancho Santa Fe and um, you know our dark skies policy the rural atmosphere uh, the protective covenant needs defense because um, it's it's um, it's always vulnerable going forward what kind of changes would you like to see uh, either in the association or the ranch itself well, first thing we need to do is get our roads fixed. So we've got infrastructure issues. Um, we pay money every month to SDG&E, AT&T, maybe Orion if you're a customer of them, for undergrounding of the communication and power lines. Are we doing it? 
no. We have 20A funds available on certain streets that they consider commuter roads, such as Camino del Norte, uh, Camino Real, etc. But since they deleted those two highways, 680 and 728, we, I think we should advocate at sdg and &E and the county for us getting more 28 funds because we have commuter roads that were never intended to be commuter roads. So what do you think makes Rancho Santa Fe unique? Well, it's the reason we moved here. It's horse keeping on our private property. Um, there are a lot of estate lots around here now that call themselves Rancho Santa Fe, but they're not. They're basically, you know, mega mansions on smaller lots and no horses. And then they don't let any trails come through them either. So, um, and that's too bad. There was a great opportunity for them, but they, you know, decided not to do that. And, um, you know, our trail system, obviously, it's over 50 miles of dedicated and maintained trails. And uh, our school system, obviously, is fantastic. Um, it's been bad. But uh, <laughs> I think we're working on that. We have a new principal now, and we have a great school board. So I think that's going to that's be good. And, um, you know, the protective covenant. And that, that's why we moved here. You know, our realtor explained to us that the protective covenant dealt with properties for the neighborhoods, that they, you know, kept uh, an eye on what the type of development was going to be on the property. You had to show them what your plans were, where, what it was going to look like, what the materials were, etc. And um, I think it helped ensure a quality around here uh, that you don't see when you drive over to Fairbanks, for instance. <laughs> you drive along, oh, look at that house. And then you said, oh, what's that? And, oh, look at that. You know, there's no, um, of course, we're, we're not plan A, B, and C, like over at the bridges. Uh, but we have a more uniformity uh, within with individuality than um, those other areas.